to Scott Pilgrim versus the podcast, a podcast where we destroy Scott Pilgrim. And this is it, the final battle between this podcast and Scott Pilgrim takes off the final episode, episode eight, the world versus Scott Pilgrim. I'm part of the world. I'm Alex. <laughs> wow, that's nice. I'm also part of the world and we're taking this guy down once and for all. I'm Pete. And in case you didn't get our little hint there, this episode, of course, is based on The Little Mermaid, the classic Disney movie that was the part of your world joke that we were making. Yep. So if you haven't seen The Little Mermaid, if you haven't seen the last episode of Scott Pilgrim, check out both of those things. Not the live action Little Mermaid, though. Haley Bailey, very good. The rest of that movie, not very great. But wow. you know, Alex dropping, wow. I would say, random takes. Is The Little Mermaid the one that takes place under the sea? Oh, it is, in fact. Why? It is Why? under the sea. It's uh, under there, the sea. Yeah, there's no minions in it, though. I should mention that. Uh, so nobody's asking for a down on down, right, Pete? It, it looks like you're getting eaten uh, by Scott Pilgrim merchandise. I love how it keeps getting stepped up at each episode a little bit more. Thank you so much. This is the Do last a episode problem where we're or... going to be talking about the podcast. I, I, my only problem is there's not enough Scott Pilgrim. I need okay. more. Yeah, Give yeah. me more. Put it yeah. right in my veins. Brief recap here. We are picking up where we find out what is later called an anti-kiss field is separating Scott and Ramona. Mm. They think it's the evil exes. So, of course, they go to the opening night musical of Scott Pilgrim's Precious Little Life, written by Knives and Stephen Stills and starring Matthew Patel. It's not them. It's actually older Scott Pilgrim. Who's uh, ripped now? Even older Scott. Even older Scott Pilgrim, and he takes on absolutely everybody, the entire cast, leading up to the dissolution of the anti kiss field. Thanks to, I don't know, Uber Ramona, basically our yeah. Ramona, and even older Ramona joined together, or even more future Ramona, I guess, joined together. Super um, Ramona. Super yeah. Ramona, and at the end of the episode, we get a bunch of bits of closure with all of the characters a little bit of a mid credits tease and of course it ends with a sweet ass mortal combat cover come on i mean talk about a win right pete you must have been la la loving it i mean i watched that end credits like five times it's uh it's been and that's hard because netflix keeps wanting you to skip it yeah it keep, i'm like fuck you man i'm trying to enjoy this mortal combat song mm -hmm. How it's, often do you say fuck you to Netflix or to an in and I should say an inanimate object or any sort of uh, a day the numbers yeah. too high to count. <laughs> the, there is no limit to quote another movie. Uh, mean Girls that also isn't very good. Let's be honest. Um, oh, my we... God, oh, my God, Alex. What kind of shit is this? <laughs> Listen, happening? We can't take Scott, Scott Pilgrim. I got to take down everything else. I got to get this yeah. negativity out of me somehow. Because let's talk about it before we get into the specifics of the episode. We're at the last episode here. What'd you guys think about the series? What'd you about, think about the finale? How do you feel about how this wrapped up? Justin, let's go to you first. Oh, Pete wants to go first. He's bummed out. He can go first. He can go, go first. I, I just want to say the they did such a great job of building up to this last episode. I mean, it it really kind of you're really amped up by the time the last episode you're about to watch it. So I feel like they did such a great job of building to this. Uh, I, well, I particularly thought was... because they make you watch the first four episodes very quickly and then they drag out the next four episodes over <laughs> several weeks. <laughs> They. <laughs> Do you mean us? Do you mean we? We, all three of us, yes. We are they. Well, let me ask you, what would you have the Mortal Kombat guys say? Oh, my God. Everything. You'd have them just walk through a lot of words and piece it together? I, I mean, just uh, he'd love it if you narrated my whole life, you know? Just well, narrated? Honest. You can't yeah. handle that energy as a, narr a narration? You'd be never rest. Do, doing your wedding vows? I mean, it would be awesome. Get it, it married. <laughs> that amount of tech now. Sweet. Would be sweet. Uh, what if we just had him say all the letters in the alphabet and we could just build words? Ah, oh, smart. B. Yeah, there's got to be C. B. Chat GPT can do it, right? Absolutely. Chat GPT can do anything. We love AI on this show, don't nope. we, folks? No, nope. nope. Justin, Justin, can you talk about what you thought about this show? Yes. Um, I, I, I really enjoyed this show. I will say it's sort of promise at the beginning of the season it definitely settled into something that um just had a different flavor 
from the all the source material and then it sort of found its own niche i my mo my favorite parts of the season were the first three episodes i think and uh I, I do like the story that was told here, but that unbridled creative part that we had at the beginning, I thought was the most exciting part of the show. This is the point where I think I can confess something here on this podcast. Oh my, I... God. Oh my God. Is it about mean girls or something? <laughs> <laughs> something totally random that nobody ever wants to hear said out loud. Uh, yeah, probably actually Pete's not going to like this. I didn't love the show the first time oh, through. Oh, come on. Oh, boy. I'm just going to drop that here. There's a lot of things that I really liked. Don't but... put this here. Don't no, say that but here. I enjoyed it a lot more watching it the second time through, talking about it here on the podcast with you guys and telling you um, the stuff. Um, hey, watching it, uh, stuff with us makes it better. Ah, oh, that's well, true. On a whole, I, I was trying to think, you know, beyond the fact that obviously I enjoyed our conversations about it, what was it about the second time that made it better? And I think one thing was plumbing into all the connections between the video game and the books and the movie and everything. So that makes it more enjoyable. But I think it's also just... It hits you really hard the first time where you're like, what is happening here? What's going on? And mm. that seems like the thing that you liked, Justin. But yes. it took me a while to understand what they were going for and sort of settle into it. So, again, the second time through, I think I was prepared for what it was. So it wasn't mm. quite as much of a shock. I was able to just enjoy the individual moments as they come. Um, so, yeah. There you go. Uh, and then I think also just help. it helps knowing, we talked about this a little bit at the beginning, but it helps knowing it legit is a sequel, something that they kept completely yeah. hidden. Like, I think you can pretty conclusively say at the end here, given everything that's happened, this is a sequel to Scott Pilgrim, which I never thought in a million years they'd do. So that's a big surprise. Knowing that going in makes it a little easier second time through. Interesting. I, yeah, that's... Uh, I'm surprised by that take. Uh, that's very interesting. I I love the series. I thought it was awesome. I do think when it came to the last episode, though, I've I've watched it twice. Although I've watched the end credits numerous times, um, the second time through, I enjoyed it more. I think the first time I was just in shock of the moves that they were making and everything that was going on. <laughs> That I was just kind just of like, Holy literally God. just like Alex. You're saying <laughs> that's <laughs> what Alex just, just said. What I said. I know. I'm almost <laughs> I'm 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 be honest. Similar... Almost word for word. I no, would say. he's talking about the whole series. I'm just saying I had a similar experience with the last episode. Oh, with the last episode. Oh, last okay. Episode, I thought I you were <laughs> just repeating what I said about the whole series. <laughs> so, Honestly, I thought I was having some sort of brain malfunction. <laughs> I thought I was diverging in time or something because I was like, did Alex just say this? Pete and Alex never say the same thing. Am I, uh, how am are I they dead? saying? Am I a ghost? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I do love this last episode, though, to the point that you were making, Pete. I think one of the things that works really nicely is they held back on the fights the last couple of episodes, like we talked about. And that was all structurally building up to this enormous fight with everybody. They versus... even teased it, though, in the beginning. He's like, this finale sucks. I'm like, yeah, it does, man. Like, I want to <laughs> see some fighting. He's literally trying to pick fights with everybody's like, nah, nah, man, we're all done with that. And I'm like, what? What? Well, but I think that's sort of the point is that the show matured beyond this show is like the mature version. All the characters grew up a little bit, you know, with Scott, without Scott doing the like, let's all fight thing. They all changed and they became like more in comfortable in their own skin across the board. Not so obsessed with Ramona. Feels like Scott and Ramona's relationship blossomed. We got to see the older Scots that never changed which allowed our current Scott, present day Scott, to change and setting up like an actual real relationship. So you think something. next season there's no fighting ever again? Is that what you're saying? Yes, it's just all kissing. Boo. The all kiss season. Well, we could get and talk about the end and whether there'll be a season two or not and whether we want there to be or not. But why don't we delve into this episode a little bit? So we get the first part, which is this whole setup of the Scott Pilgrim musical. We get to hear a little bit of it in the background, but I thought this was great. I love the sequence. I know we were just touching on it a little bit, but the idea that we got to see all the evil exes and how they have changed and grown yeah. and moved beyond fighting. I thought that was very, very fun to see. Todd, Todd loves butter. Oh, he I mean, who loves butter. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
Have you ever Great. done that? I thought about you, Pete, and I felt like maybe that was something you've actually done at some point. Oh, yeah. You guys don't do that? Well, like, I have a long conversation about how much butter they should be putting on my popcorn. <laughs> it's not even butter in the movie theater. It's like a, a goo. A syrupy, yeah, almost resemblance of a butter flavor. Would you, if you had an opportunity, I feel like we've had this conversation before. Maybe we're all going crazy here, or maybe just me, uh, to have a butter tub and it's just like butter with like a piece of popcorn floating in it. No. You no, flip the on. script yeah, where you go to a machine and press a button and a couple of popcorns that's ridiculous. come ridiculous. <laughs> Drowning popcorn in butter, mm -hmm. not ridiculous. Having to have like a lot of napkins underneath the bag of butter because it's dripping through. A bag of uh, butter. <laughs> bag of butter. <laughs> well, you know, the, it, the bag becomes. Right. Very... It starts to, it starts to like get loose on the bottom like a bag when you have that much butter. <laughs> no, no wonder you see movies alone, Pete. This sounds like a disgusting scene. Yeah. You know you, hey, who's that? Get, I'm going to give you a million dollar idea, Pete. Coca-Cola freestyle, but for butter, right? But, and it's all just one, it's all just butter? There's no <laughs> just flavor. There's no freestyle. flavor. I love how you put the freestyle yeah, get, on it for mm, no reason. What should I have? Hey, it, did you, who ordered this Pete LePage's butter style machine? <laughs> then he, what movie theater <laughs> hook up the butter machine? Uh, I like that. Um, the... <laughs> <laughs> just to get back to like some lines i think this is roxy says let's go watch a stupid musical about a stupid guy yeah great stuff there. i mean i think and uh, that's why to credit this episode like it really got to everyone got a hit in everyone got oh, to yeah. have a line or a thing happen that was fun and that's great that's hard to do with this many characters I mm -hmm. also liked how, like, even when he was going to pick a fight, like, the music would ramp up a little bit, like it was going to happen. Like, they were making a lot of really smart, fun choices with stuff on many levels here. I also want to give a shout out, just because this is my notes at this point, but the emotional arc of Wallace over the course mm, of yes. this episode in particular, but also this whole season, I thought was great. Like, they just sort of layer it in there at the beginning of the episode with him saying come on there's no such thing as sparks leave me alone to todd and then by the end of the episode he goes on that whole eat pray love tour he's in paris he meets a guy maybe the guy who works at nintendo we don't know and they make a lot sparks, of sense and it's super sweet it's really nice <laughs> It sparks. The other thing is like they play fast and loose with what love is in this show, mm -hmm. um, like sparks being real sometimes and also not real other times. Or what are sparks like? It's it's not a true love. It's not like it's just like infatuation. Is that what we're thinking? Like, no, 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 no. no. They're talking about how when you really love somebody and kiss them, it's like uh, you feel like a, almost like a sparks or like a lightning type of thing. What about Todd Sparks for Wallace? It didn't work out. You can have Sparks. I mean, just because you're feeling something doesn't mean the other person's feeling it. Do you think butter kills Sparks and by by its nature, love itself? Oh Too my much God. butter am I, kills love. Am I drowning love in butter? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> oh, man. Love dipped um, in butter. Yum, uh, yum. Uh, um, yeah. You can get that at the butter freestyle machine as well. Oh, wow. It's called this butter freestyle style. freestyle machine is really... <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> Covered a lot it's of an drugs. expensive machine to run. Yeah. Just think of all the, <laughs> the dairy you got to pump through that thing. I also like the idea that, Pete, you eat so much butter, there's like an actual slime trail following you. <laughs> you know where you're sitting. You can just follow the goop. Uh, do you think they make the butter fresh on the site for the butter freestyle? Yeah, there's like um, 17 churning. Amish women churning <laughs> yeah, in the background. Yeah. There's a sideways cow just sort of lying down at a counter. Sideways cow? Sideways oh, cow. Oh, the old sideways well, cow. Well, so you right, can right, siphon yeah. it properly. You don't have a lot of room behind the counter at a movie theater, so you got to put the cow, cow sideways. Just that's real quick on the butter style machine. Are you <laughs> yeah, saying the right. utter comes right out and that's what dispenses the butter? <laughs> Oh, I like guess you so. churn it yeah. in the cow? Well, you yes. said a sideways cow, so I don't know what you're getting. <laughs> well, I guess I was picturing, because you mentioned the Amish ladies, right? So what I was actually yeah. picturing was sideways cow lying in the back. It's uh, pouring milk. <laughs> just absolutely. Pete's it's pouring milk. milk. Pouring milk into the Amish ladies' buckets, which are probably also yes. popcorn buckets, let's be honest, yeah. where if you want to get the butter fresh style. That's what you want. Yeah. Fresh you style. A bu bucket it's that. butter style, but yeah. sure. When we say sideways, do you mean just turn sideways and still standing on all fours or laying on its laying side? Laying on its oh, side so you get better access to the others. 
Oh my God! You think farmers, after working <laughs> yeah. hundreds of years milking cows, yeah, they're doing it wrong. And you're like, you thought you're, about you're it for doing two it wrong. seconds, and you're, you're like, like oh, make the cows sideways. sideways. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna walk from farm to farm until somebody uh, picks up. We got to do is stack your cows. You have them sideways. You can just mm-hmm. stack them up and cow stackers. I don't know if cows love laying on each other. <laughs> yeah. Hey, can I get my uh, butter fresh style cow stackers? Uh, right. we're doing I don't think anyone's or... still listening anymore, but we should try to continue. <laughs> yeah. Uh, come on. Uh, Trolls 3 is about to start, and I have to go in. So let's okay. get back to it. Okay. Again, wildly random takes for you no. Know, who knows? <laughs> who knows what Alex is doing? So, yeah, at the start of the play, they're uh, kind of panning the musical. theater. You get to see – yeah, musical, sorry. You get to see people having nice moments with it, people mouthing lines and being involved, which was really fun. I also love the old young Neil thing and Neil. <laughs> reading it going i wonder if there's any relation that's just good yeah, stuff it's great yeah well okay let's talk about that for a second because the line is based on a memoir by old young neil mm-hmm. how does this work because i thought the musical was based on the screenplay but the screenplay was written by young neil so do they take the future biography written by old young neil that was what was it uh old uh, young neil's Precious Big Life or something Precious like that. Precious Big Life, yes. Yeah. Precious Big Life. Uh, and took it back in time and then based the musical on that? Is that what happened here? It is a strangely unexplained thing, and it's like a tossed-off joke in the midst of a bunch of plot that is about traveling back in time to change things. Mm-hmm. So um, I, it must be that, that uh, it somehow came back. I mean, it's fine. It was a funny joke. Yeah. It's just I think that's agreed. what it is. Yeah, uh, we got to hear the bread makes you fat song, which is very oh, funny. Yeah, Call back great. there, and then we have the big fight. Um, uh, like we've been talking about, I thought this was so great, not just because this is a very dynamic anime style fight, but also that the emotional grounding was there at the same time. Like we've been talking about that. Even older Scott won't let go of everything, and he feels like he needs to fight everybody and take everybody down. That's all he's been training for, when ultimately the resolution of it is older Ramona comes in and is like, we had one fight. It's not the end of the world. You could have come talk to me. And granted, we find out she's kind of been in stasis as well. She also hasn't really grown up, which I think explains the delivery girl job from the previous episode. But yeah, I really like short version. I really liked everything that was going on here. I thought it was very nice and layered to have the action come out of the characters and not just be there to have an action scene. And and to be like the, the smart, uh, you know, expect expected is the wrong word. Cause it's not like we were like, this is what's going to happen. But like, Scott, of course, is going to break up at the first sign of trouble because he fell in love at the first sign of interest. So it makes sense that he just ha- doesn't have the tools to be like, oh, no, a fight. This is over. It's like a little kid when they, you're, you know, you take your basketball and leave, except it's a wedding ring and it's true love. And there, you know, you can't kiss. Well, I did enjoy the fact that, like, you know, we got to see all these characters making different decisions, kind of like uh, instead of the fight, like what they do with their choices. And it was cool that Ramona also got this moment of like, oh, I do run away, uh, you know, so and she kind of says like, hey, Scott, help me remember that, which I thought was a really sweet moment. But also like, uh, you know, Ramona, one of the you know kind of like higher held characters it's good that like she's even like oh i gotta do some improvements too it's not just scott being an asshole Uh, you know so i i I liked it well and like i like that they continue to balance the tone of like big emotional revelations and moments for the characters with like even older scott saying ha you sound like my wife yeah which i thought was just like a great little like meta ish but like cutting through all of what's happening uh joke right there in the middle of this and just to talk about the ramona of it all in terms of where she ends up since we're touching touching on that now it is very different from the movie and very different from the book so if you're going to look at gradations there in the book there's really this level of uncertainty over the end with Scott and Ramona, not in terms of like, we've got this bright future ahead of us, but we've been through some rough times already. I don't know if we're going to make it. I guess we'll see, question mark. And then in the movie, like we talked about, at least in the theatrical ending, it 
feels a little perfunctory, you know, just her being like, yeah. ah, sure. Okay, let's be together and try this out. Here we go. So this to me felt like the most fully explored, grounded place for Ramona, the character, to end up here where she's actually been through something and we actually have ridden with her and understand what she's going through. And she has really grown, like we're emphasizing. Well, now, and it's like, oh, good. No, no, I was going to. You probably have something. You were going to just talk about Alex? Yeah, I was just going <laughs> to shit on a couple of his thoughts, but if you wanted to say something. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, go ahead. I'd, I'd love to hear that. I well, I prefer to think about it as buttering down on my thoughts, but go okay, ahead. Cool. That's really nice. Why don't you turn those um, uh, the shitting you're doing, Pete, into a nice Yeah, why don't you lay cream. those ideas on the side so they're a little easier to access? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's great. <laughs> They're pretty close to being easy to access. I was just going to say it, the, Scott Pilgrim came about in a time when storytelling was still in this mode of like, the women are the objects of the story and they just exist. The manic pixie dream girl thing. And so like, th this has been, I think this, this series is about like sort of actually taking ownership of that and moving away. So you don't just get the uh the um what's the uh movie the ultimate manic with natalie portman the manic pixie dream girl movie uh garden, uh, state. garden state yeah so like where it's her just being like yep i guess i like they just and there's no end to it it's just like one moment of like we're in love now and that's what the the movie was like based on the book being like that and now it's it's totally different i will stop uh oh yeah go ahead shit on me pete well, well, take it easy. That got real weird real fast. Somebody clip my, that out quick. Uh, my <laughs> point is that, Alex, why can't she just like rollerblading? You know, maybe it's her happy place. She can mm. think, you know, while mm. she's skating. So what if she doesn't have, like, maybe the greatest job in your eyes? You know what I mean? Like, she can just like being a delivery person, and it can just be a thing that she does, you know? Let me ask you this. Would you trust a doctor? You're having surgery and he, rollerblade, he or she rollerblades right in? No, oh my God. <laughs> You're like, oh, what, what about here about comes my surgeon. I would, yeah, I would like sharp like scalpels of the like, here we go. And they jump up at you and they're like, skate, 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 skate. Just slice, slice you open. And it's Tony Hawk. Sick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the famous rollerblader Tony Hawk. I, well, I don't know he if said, you're being uh... serious or not, Pete, but I will say on that thing, on the whole, I have no problem with rollerblading. I have no problem with well, delivery. It just seemed you like, I can't understand why she'd still be doing this. You know? No, she owns up to that, that she is still stuck in the same place. She hasn't actually grown as well, and that's something that she needs to work on. I think it's a visual indicator of that, that she, mm. like Scott, has the same things that she's very focused on. She hasn't moved ahead in the intervening years. Uh, I'd like to talk about the Will Forte of it all, if we if we can. I mean, sure. the fact that he goes from this rage kind of like monologue of like, I must defeat you all, to then she's like, it was one fight. And he was immediately like, does that mean we can get back together? It was just so hysterical. I mean, I was surprised that we got Will Forte in the second to last episode and not like, so I was just happy that they brought back like, you know, they went even harder on the Will Farte of it all in, in such a fun way. Uh, Alex, as our sort of aging voices expert, did you feel like Will Forte playing even older Scott was able to find another gear there? We could have gone a whole episode without this bit, man. It would have been uh, nice. It's not a bit. This is Alex's no, this most is marketable I skill. Thought, yeah. Uh, I thought it was great. I thought he did a really good job. And honestly, I felt like Mary Elizabeth Winstead was the most appropriate. She has been the entire series in this episode because, again, it was much closer to her actual age. Age. Mary Elizabeth Winstead, of course, being, I don't know, at this point, the world's oldest woman, I believe. She was just certified at by Lucasfilm. Yeah. Where yep. <laughs> Famously, they're in charge of that. And yeah. uh, just so that you, the listeners, I hate know all of this. Alex is, has a side job where when there's a murder, cops call him in and they play a tape of the killer and Alex can identify the exact age of the murderer. Yes, and that's a true. big clue for them. And every time I also identify it as Will Forte, which is a less valuable skill, but they, they don't discount that at this point. Yeah, Will Forte hates you, by the way. <laughs> he really does. He has gotten arrested so many times. Yeah, so not many cool, times. dude. Uh, speaking of not, this is the first good use of the not joke in, I don't know, I want to say 15, 20 years, something like that. 
Wow. Him, nice. Well, him getting sent back to the place that he started and going, oh, well, this is just great. Not very funny. Yeah. Made me laugh. Totally correct. I agree with you. Yes. Uh, and then, oh, right before that, when Ramona, the Ramonas become super Ramona, I love the joke of the two Scots being like, this is just like Sonic the Hedgehog 2, Sonic the Hedgehog 3. Yeah, I was about to say that. I was about to say that. Very funny callback to Very all fun. the Sonic the Hedgehog jokes that have happened in this. A lot. Seriously? Surprising so amount. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, I can't believe Pete hasn't called this out yet, but time to chow down. Yeah, oh huh? man, yeah, it's on my list. Did not uh, uh, see that coming. I yeah, was that. worried when she started fighting, though, because I was like, oh no, don't die, knives. Is this, I'm going to ask a question that's probably going to be embarrassing for us since I don't think any of us will know the answer to this, but I wonder if anybody listening will know the answer. Mm, what the was title? this fight a reference to? Because this fight had to be like some sort of Dragon Ball or some anime something. It felt like the place they were in and him turning into the red demon monster and everything. That was Dragon Ball Z where that was he Dragon just Ball kept Z. kind of like, but it's yeah. he also kind of looked like a street fighter. Mm -hmm. You know. We, I mean, there was a lot of stuff mashed up here. Yeah, uh, we get like some great just 8-bit eight eight arcade music uh, thrown in. Knives with her 8-bit knives I thought was very cool. Yeah. Uh, the that good. What was the title card? Maybe that's a hint. Whatever the... Oh, I don't know. I've, I've gotten one of those so far, so I'm not even going to try on that. <sighs> oh, okay. Um, normally, I'm very good at video games, though, so it's been surprising to me that... So, so just a quick question. Yeah, define normal. Define what's normally? That? What do you mean normally? normally. Just normally. Hey, like, like what's 1986? Your game? Yeah, you what's your and... game that you're really good at? I, I, a lot. There's a lot of games that like... No, I'm just saying in terms of like so usually name I'm very one. good about knowing games and understanding games, but... You're talking about Canasta? Kadasta, <laughs> Mahjong. Oh yeah. my God, what just happened? Uh, the when they're coming out of the theater, when they're back there after they've beaten old, old, even older Scott, there was everybody coming out and having reactions. There was one woman in the audience just like, "Yeah, it sucked," <laughs> which yeah. I thought was very funny. Yeah, um, that was funny. And I did like the. Uh, I can appreciate your uh, villain, uh, you know, plan or whatever, but I have my own villain uh, plan. I thought that was really fun. Well, and what do we think about uh, Gideon slash I, I respect your villain plot. I have my own villain plot. Like, what was the deal with him? Why? I mean, he, when we get at the end sort of a setup for season two that he and Julie are uh, going to come back, which yeah. is fun. Uh, yeah. But he was just going to blow everyone up? Who's just going to kill everyone? That was his plot. The goose is I mean, that's a pretty dark Hong Kong, choice. Hong Kong fuckers. <laughs> Hong Kong motherfuckers, the goose is loose. Hong Kong fuckers. Yeah. yeah. It's actually Hong Kong, the goose is loose, mother. Boop, because it gets bleeped out. But, you know, who's splitting yeah. hairs here? I guess the, so. Uh, I think there were, even, even with everything that we're saying, there were a couple of things that maybe got a little lost in the process while they focused on other things. Gordon Goose is, I think, a good example of that, where we already had this emotional catharsis, so he was just kind of there at the end. Yeah. Another one that I, I really thought I wanted more of was Envy Adams. If yeah. anything, I was thinking about her a little bit when you were talking about the Matic Pixie Dream Girl stuff, which obviously she's not that, but a lot of the other female characters got a lot more time in the sun. But consequently, we took a lot away from Envy Adams, particularly what shows up in the book, less so in the movie. Um, but there just wasn't as much of her here. And I would have wanted to see I would have wanted to see a similar arc for her, potentially. Yeah, I mean, I I think you, you just in something like this, there was so much going on. You got to make some cuts somewhere like I don't know how you squeeze in the Envy stuff, especially since so much of what Envy does is light up Scott and mm -hmm. in the books teach Scott how to be better, to, to move on. And that wasn't a needed lesson here because this Scott, because he was removed from the story, just sort of learned that by watching. Yeah, I, I guess that makes sense. Um, 
I mean, I think that's probably the same reason we don't see Lisa Miller anywhere in here, because she's more about Scott than Ramona. Can Let's we... talk a little bit about where everybody ends up. We get a number from Sex Bob Bomb, which is great. Oh, that was great. really awesome. Hang so on, good. before we get into this, though, I just want to say something I'm surprised Justin hasn't uh, brought up yet is mm. uh, towards the wrap up when, uh, you know, the the reveal that she's kind of been in the coffee shop a little lower on the phone and looking at people's butts all day. Oh, she's like, yeah, all I get, it's great. I get to stare at his ass. And we finally get the reveal that there has been a lot of ass shots. That's what her- I'm saying. Yeah. This is, this has been real the whole time. It's all butts. It's butts all the way down. Yeah. I, I was getting to that. That's like oh, the fourth or fifth thing in the <laughs> rundown. No, that's fine. Uh, we'll get back to it. We'll have this same conversation again and feel crazy about it. So we get the sex Bob Bob number. Knives is in the band now. And so they finally actually really sound good, which I thought was great. Just a lovely detail. Yeah. I like Ridmona and Neil watching. We get to see Knives and Steven. Their day job is writing songs for Envy Adams. Very fun there as well. Yep. Ramona is a professional stunt woman per the discussion that we were having earlier. I, I thought that was such a funny little turn. Like she, and again, like this, this story changed the characters irrevocably. And so she is like a stunt, a stunt person. Like that's hilarious. Yeah. I love that. And that's just, even if that doesn't work out, you know, it's, she is exploring new things and not doing the same thing. So I think that was very purposeful to get her a job that was away from roller braid delivery girl, which is the worst job I could think of for a human being. Yeah. Oh it's just God, bad. Dude. It's just You're bad. You're just an asshole, man. No, no, no. If anybody out there is listening and they're a delivery person on roller blades, I hope you feel bad about yourself. Oh my God, dude. I mean, I don't know how many people are still blading Why would you even uh, in that? general. Yeah, I guess we'll see. Uh, we'll I mean, let's not forget the famous, angry angry handwritten letters that we get yeah. uh the movie uh airborne from 1993 the famous uh rollerblading movie hmm. when they go down uh, that also in the hill. remote i don't remember that at all in the remote as a stunt either. woman young neil driving the cart Golf again car, yeah. did not get a mario kart joke but we did hear young neil making the car noises which i thought was very fun yeah. Uh, yeah. and then in the not so deepest of easter eggs but like a layered one anyway we see simon Pegg and nick frost again as security mm. guards they are eating cornettos which is the ice cream cones if you don't know that is not exactly the inspiration but it's the name for the movie trilogy that they did with edgar wright who directed scott pilgrim versus the world so very fun thing growing back there uh no account video closes what was up with that? I mean, if you're doing a show for Netflix, you got to shut the video store. <laughs> yeah, that's part of the whole thing. They said we have no changes except for this one part. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just that's our only note on the store. entire show. Close it. Yeah. yeah. Show shut them. it down. Show they're bad. Uh, but that but we cut over to Lucas's butt. That's when we get over to that. He's working in the coffee shop. And I'm loving we, it. Also, get a hint that he is interested in Kim Pine. What do you think about that potential pairing, Lucas Lee and Kim Pine? I don't know. That Whatever. seems like Lucas seems like a more Scott Scott. Like he's like a more extreme, which makes sense in some ways. But Kim also hates Scott, so she's dating like a more extreme Scott. I don't know. Opposites attract. That's deep, man. I you guess ever we'll thought see. that? No, That's like magnets. No. You know what I mean? Wow. Uh, we get the Wallace scene we mentioned earlier. And then for one last time, we get to see Ramona do her hair. I love Come this. On. Well, well, I love this because I loved it's exactly the same, except we see her smile at the end instead of seeing yeah. look resigned. I thought that was lovely. We see everybody together. A shot of Toronto. Great stuff. Really good. Uh, and, you know, Toronto really was. Um, has anyone ever thought this before? A character? <laughs> no. In Toronto was not a character in the show. It was a character. No. I felt you know it was a little You know who was flavor. a character, though? I don't know if you saw this in the credits. The Nato machines that formed the yeah. anti-kiss field. The voice, which was just... Was Stephen Root? Yeah. Wow. Very weird. Very weird. What a weird thing, but so great. Fun. And then finally, we get back to this mid credit scene that we talked about, where it's Julie and Gordon Goose sitting looking at the screens, and they say, now the real game can begin, followed by Hong Kong, the goose is loose, mother. Um, What do you guys think? I I will say... Then the Mortal Kombat song after that. Yes, and that runs five times, I believe. 
If, yeah, if you got, they make you work for if it. If you press time. it, yeah. yeah, yes. Well, what do you think about this? And, and to set it up up front, Brian Lee O'Malley and Ben David Grubinski, I haven't read every interview with them, but in numerous interviews, they were asked about this. And every time they were like, nah, that was just a fun thing that we threw in there. We were really just concentrating on making one season of the show, making it good, and yeah, that's right. it. But also, they completely lied about what the show was. So what do you think is going on here? And would you want to see a second season? Deaf second season. We got to keep this fight going. I think they're definitely setting up a potential second season, but being coy, like you're saying, and this show is pretty popular by uh, some accounts, I think. All right. I've seen I don't, it, I've I seen don't it listed. Know. I, yeah. I'm not sure how well it did. We, we need to wait a month until Nielsen numbers come out. That's how long it yeah. takes for those numbers. And those are legit streaming numbers anything that you see on netflix in terms of their top 10 that's actually something that's mostly curated they put out their own numbers and i i didn't actually look at it if you guys want to talk for a second i'll try to check that real quick let's t- talk, talk about it ourselves um one thing that i did like was during the big battle sequences uh some really sweet moves you know what i mean like yeah scott pilgrim's headbutting was just immaculate you know he did like a real cool spin kick which i really appreciated also the beef callback was fun to the movie it's like i've got beef uh that yeah. was cool do you consider like a headbutt a butt like that's just more butts that we're seeing in this no, tall butts no, that's what no. i'm saying a, a headbutt and a butt are completely different once you start looking at butts, you start seeing butts everywhere. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Um, how about Matthew Patel, who we haven't talked about yet, giving us some um, uh, real Chris Tucker from uh, Corbin Dallas Multipass <laughs> at the beginning? Yeah, but buzz, buzz, buzz. yeah, yeah. He buzz, buzz uh, them I didn't yeah. do that well, according to Netflix's self-reported stats. It popped up in their top ten one week, and that was pretty much it. So, oh, come really? on. We'll see. I, cause I guess I've just seen some people saying like it was one of their favorite shows of the year, like uh, yeah. articles. And, and, and that can mean something as well. Honestly, with Netflix, as much as we know it has a lot to do with overall over the course of 28 days so it's less about like did it go into the top 10 28 days later and 28 Let's days see. later did the zombies come back right mm. zombies are the viewers Us. right but sometimes the viewers will come back you know what i mean totally yeah here's here's what i'd say is i don't need a second season necessarily of course i'd watch it of wow. course i'd be happy like, with it what a fucking piece of shit no but i'm glad that they told a story that completely reevaluates scott pilgrim over a decade yes. later i'm very impressed by that i'm very impressed by it being a stealth sequel getting this amazing cast together so i'm very happy with all of that if there's more that's awesome but also they legitimately did like they tied it up and said what they needed to say so I hope it was successful enough that they do a second season, but I also hope that they only come back and do a second season if they have a really good, strong idea. I'd, I'd mm. like to take what you said, but then p- tilt it on its side a little bit. I think <laughs> like, oh, interesting. they did a great job of like telling this version of the Scott Pilgrim story. I love all these characters. I'd like to see a different kind of... I know, different. I, I know what you want to see, Pete, because... The first iteration or the first two iterations were both from Scott's perspective. This was from Ramona's perspective. The third iteration, we need to see what's going on from Gideon the Cat's perspective, right, Pete? Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. We didn't get a ton of Gideon the Cat. I mean, what I wanted, what I sort of talked about a couple times on the podcast is let's get into Scott's exes. We, then we can get Envy. We can get some other oh, stuff wow. in there. Like, let's – that flips it on his head and, and, again, puts Ramona a little bit at the center. Maybe it's – it doesn't have to be fighting necessarily, but but something, you know? Yeah. Well, we will definitely see. I got to say, I think we lost this one eight times in a row. How? How do we I keep, don't know. And yet we keep coming back for more. We do. Because we're resilient, like a couple of, like a triple thread of butts, like mm-hmm. three great And we butts. still have at least one episode to go where we're going to talk about the video game. We did promise that. Obviously, if there's anything else in the world of Scott Pilgrim. You're still do. getting good at the game. That's what's I'm still for. like, I'm psyching myself up for it. You know, like that's the main part of the process when you're playing a video game is like you look at it and you like size it up a little bit. Oh, you should wow. turn it on. It would be like, no, way. I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, but next oh. year is the 20th anniversary of Scott Pilgrim. We know there's some big box sets coming out from Oni Press. Maybe there's more surprises or something like that. I guess we'll have to see what happens. Cool. It's going to be like a hologram retelling the story one more time. Ooh, in, uh, like 10 uh, years. Foil oh. cover. 
it comes in a box and maybe it is a cat maybe it's a cat in a box pete oh Ooh. adopting a scott pilgrim that's the nice. real future yeah. <laughs> that's the final thing and for all of you, if you'd like to support this podcast and all the podcasts, we do patreon.com slash comic book club. Also, we do a live show every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. to Facebook and YouTube. Come hang out. We would love to chat with you about Scott Pilgrim, Apple, Spotify, Android, or the app of your choice to subscribe, listen, and follow the show at comic book live on Twitter slash X comic book club live on TikTok and Instagram comic book club live.com for this podcast. Many more. And Scott Pilgrim, you won. You win this round, but we're going to come back now that we've cracked this butter style machine. It's our chance to finally win. Here's a couple problems with it. You have to keep it very hot in there because the butter, so that's a hot sideways cow. The cows and the Amish ladies who are churning the butter have got to be far away because you don't want them to get, like, too boiling or anything like that. You can't boil the Amish ladies. That's right. Tell you what, Uh, let's leave this for the next episode when we go versus this butter machine that we've invented. And we will because it's going to. I think we're going to take that one. (laughs) <laughs> the butter, butter style will kill us faster than any. Beats halfway dead. He's eating too much.